In this episode, we are going to take this readme file that we have created in our short course, and we're going to turn it into a wiki. Now, if you've just clicked on this because it is in your form for you sort of feed, this video is a part of a short course. You don't have to complete this short course to be able to understand, but just so you know that I am using a demonstrated uh, readme file from this course. So it's a car simulator and you're most welcome to go to episode one. If you go down in the description, you will find the link to the playlist and you'll be able to go and then make this. But for everybody else who's following along, the video, the last couple of videos we went through and we built this readme file for our GitHub repository and for our project. <clears throat> Again, this is so that we learn to write documentation for our code for people in the future. This is a key skill to have as a software developer. You can even see for those of you who haven't seen the video, this, this even has a GIF of the output running. Again, for those of you who are not following along uh, with the course, we create all our documentation in Visual Studio Code using the Markdown extension. And we then use desktop, uh, GitHub Desktop to then uh, make all our commits and push to the cloud, which is github.com. Right, to be able to make this, you'll have these icons on the side and just uh, make a new folder and call it docs. So now you're going to have an empty folder. What I want you to do then is to right click new file. <clears throat> and I want you to just name the methods inside our class for each page. And just make sure that you place a dot MD at the end of it so that Visual Studio Code knows that this is a markdown file. And also so that GitHub knows that this is a markdown file. To be able to make links to these folders and files, we are going to use the same concept that we use to be able to jump down to headings inside this single document. And to be able to do that, we, we can basically delete this like this, and this is load simulator. And if you use Visual Studio Code like this, and you have the extensions for visuals uh, for markdown, you can just use the predictor window to be able to find the correct file. So example, I can go like this, which is a, a slash, go down to docs. And then inside docs, you can see all these readme files. And I believe the one we wanted, where are we? We are on load simulator. There it is. <clears throat> so this will now go to uh, load simulator. So if I just bring up the preview window here <clears throat> and go to load simulator. If I click on it now, it will actually go to the load simulator file, which we're on now. And this is it. Okay. And so this is just content from the original file that I've copied over. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rebuild the, the readme file. So I'm going to rebuild this and place all of this into the files and then we'll look at it again. So here we go. Okay. So I have moved all of the content from the readme file, which could be known as like an index, like the, the first page of our wiki. And I've left the overview in there along with the heading. So it looks nice. Actually, we don't even need, we don't need that heading. Let's just get rid of that heading because <clears throat> we have a nice banner here. So we have our overview, which explains what we are documenting. And then I have a table of contents, which holds the methods here. There is one missing. We actually need to put one more in there. Maybe we'll put this here. Uh, what was it that I was putting in here? Uh, full code, whoops, put a capital C code. And then we put our, and then again, we just press the single backslash. Is it a backslash or a forward slash? Nah, semantics. 
Okay, we go docs <clears throat> and then we need to find full code. Okay, and that will link this to full code. Now, I just need to go through here and just quickly change all these. So we'll quickly do that. Okay, remember slash docs. This one is run simulator. So that's run. Sometimes it's nice to name things a little bit simpler. Same here. We just hit the backslash, cycle down. This one is accelerate. Break. You guys will notice I put my glasses on. I, I'm actually getting blinded by my lights are reflecting, so I might just take them off. Oh, everything's blurry now, but I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, docs. And now we're going to break. There it is. <clears throat> Change gear. Let's change gear, turn steering wheel. Guys, I've said this in other videos, so in case you're not a part of the course that I'm doing, uh, this is not available on github.com. So you will be using a bare bones editor there. This definitely makes it easier to be able to ensure that you are actually linking to your file. If you try and do this manually, even the smallest mistake like capitalizing inside here will cause errors and you won't link. So I always say use, um, use the extensions in VS code. Turn steering wheel, which is the bottom one. Yes. Okay, so we, have we got all of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Okay, and so what, what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna save this. So let's just go file, save all. Okay, that's all saved. Here, we need to change this to that. And then we need to push it. <clears throat> create wiki. Again, this is, there is an actual wiki function on GitHub, but you must make your uh, repository public for it to be activated. This allows you to create a manual wiki at your own leisure and at your own design. By using these links, you can do this yourself. Okay, create, wiki, go. Okay, we're gonna push there. And the reason I wanna do this is I want to go up now. And uh, so let's just refresh that. Oh, my image is broken for some reason. Let's go have a look why. There we go. Okay, this is a bad refresh. <clears throat> Okay, so now what we have, and I, and I do this here because one, dark mode just makes everything look nicer. Uh, it's crazy that to think that for so many years, possibly decades, we lived without dark mode. I can't believe we worked without dark mode. Light mode is horrible. Okay, so now we can really start to see our wiki. So the yellow really stands out nicely against the, the GitHub dark background here and the font style on GitHub is just nice. So we can see we've got our overview, our table of contents, uh, I have an output, a video will be coming. So check down in the description for the video that will show you in depth how to make this GIF and to be able to post, place it inside your wiki. So keep an eye out for that video, if not, I believe if you go to the documentation video, I do explain how to do it in that as well. So look through all the documentation videos, it is there. You can see as well, I've, I've left our tests down the bottom. Again, these are just a few examples. There are many more test case in the documentation that I've asked you to look at. So let's go back to table of contents. So now we have an actual wiki. So we click on links and it takes us to new pages. Okay. And again, this is a single class project and for a beginner, it's big. But for an intermediate programmer, this is small. This is a small program. It has one class and limited functionality. And so we've placed each method into a different file where if you were making a bigger project, it would be each class in a separate um, file. And of course it would have so much details 
uh, explanations, but for just to demonstrate a wiki, I have just placed limited amount of stuff in there, okay? So let's go back. So that's the full code. That would be your full code. And as, as you can see, I've just placed the boilerplate co code in there. Excuse me. Okay, so go to the next one, load simulator. This is a little bit more of a better example. Uh, we should probably make that into a single hashtag heading, okay? And you can, we have an explanation of what this does. We have the parameters like we went through, okay? And then the code. And it's a small, it's just a, it's just a small file. And again, a wiki is used for something that's much more complex, okay? But now that you understand how it works, okay? you'll be able to use the readme, which is the, which is the file that is picked up by GitHub and immediately placed uh, as the, the facing document for anybody looking through it. And then from that document, you can link other documents. So if we go up here, you can actually see that this file <clears throat> is in the repository on GitHub. And sorry, let me just go back. And as always, the readme sits in the main folder of the repository. And then we can click on docs and then we can see all of our other markdown files right here. And so this is how you make a simple wiki without putting your code uh, out for the world to see by making it public. Okay, and, and this is a great beginner technique that you can learn now. And then when you finish this, when you finish this course, this is your stepping stone. This is your motivation then to, to, to be able to just take your first steps into intermediacy. So finishing this project that I have assigned you places you outside of novicehood into intermediacy okay and again you still have so much to learn you really only know the beginnings but you have to step out of that beginner stuff into the intermediate stuff and this was your gateway and learning how to build a wiki in github is going to help you now that you're bringing you're going to start making bigger progress programs, more complex programs, and I will supply them for you. Now, first I have to go back and make a, my first small Python project for the beginners. But as soon as I've done that, I will make you, um, you know, more difficult ones, but I need to pump out a couple more of these first so that you can have at least three of these, you know, big Python projects for beginners under your belt, and then we'll start doing much more difficult things. All right, I'll see you in the next course.